All right. So what is storage virtualization? So I'm going to restate. This is I, we already saw this definition before, and I'm going to restate in terms of the disk. So Rick Vanderlands didn't say this, but he, he just said virtualization, and I am adding storage word here. A storage virtualization means that applications can use a storage without any concerns for where it resides, what technical interface is, whether it is SCSI or SATA, we don't care, and how it has been implemented, whether it is in disk array or just a bunch of disk or you know, whatever, what platform it is, and so on and so forth, or how much it is available. If you do that, that is this storage virtualization. And so basically, with the storage virtualization, the distance doesn't matter. Remote storage devices appear local. The size doesn't matter. A smaller disk appears big. A spread doesn't matter. Whether it is one disk or multiple disk, you can't tell the difference. File system doesn't matter. Whether it is stored on Windows, Linux, or Unix, you don't know. Win virtual interface. So basically, you could think that looks like SCSI, but it is no SCSI. And the advantage is that high availability, disaster recovery, improved performance, everything else, you know, that we talked about virtualization. So we apply all that to storage. And um, so talking about the benefits, which is just restating the previous things, you can go much longer distances, you can get much longer, much better performance, you can get much better disk utilization, you get higher availability with multiple access paths and higher performance because of multiple access paths, higher availability due to redundant storage. So you will have, you can write on two disks while you need to write only on one. Disaster recovery capability, if something happens, you know, some, you know, you still have the data saved from other places, other copies. Continuous online backup. I think I, I missed the word up, so please write it down. Backup. Easier testing, increasable scalability. Scalability means that you want to, you have one gigabyte and you want to make it 10 gigabyte and one terabyte and 15 terabyte and you can just do that in the background. Not to worry about it. Allow thin provisioning, which means that you could just have one gigabit disk while the customer thinks that they have 10 gigabit disk. Right? This is like Amazon. When you get from S3, Amazon S3 is a terabyte. I don't know whether you're getting terabyte or not because until you use it, they don't need to put you, give you terabyte. They can say, yeah, you have terabyte. So that is like overbooking. We already saw several uses, of several um, virtual um, virtualizations views. So for example, the file system is a virtual view. It's not a physical view. Physically, there is no file on the disk. And similarly, the LUNs and etc. these are all logical. So whenever they say logical, they mean virtual. Right? But the word virtual was not used in the original days, so they call it logical. File systems are also logical and virtual. Thin provisioning is basically also a type of virtualization, overbooking. Another way to virtualize storage is by RAID. So I have a whole slide on RAID. RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. This is the current definition. Redundant Array of Independent Disks. 20 years ago when it was invented by Berkeley people, okay, Professor Patterson, he was doing research on Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks. So he invented the term RAID. Okay. He took lots of cheap disks and said, look, with lots of cheap disks, I can make a cheaper big disk as opposed to buying a big cheaper disk, big disk. So it's about like this. You buy 10 1 gigabyte disk, they might be cheaper than buying a 1 10 gigabyte disk. Right? So that is how he was working on and he came up with this idea of RAID. And now the economy has changed. So now it, it's not cheaper to buy 10 1 gigabyte disk anymore. It is cheaper to buy one 10 gigabyte disk. All right. But you still need RAID, as we'll see in a minute. And so it is called independent disk. That's all it means. Redundant array of independent disks. Trick. The trick is the divide and replicate data among multiple drives. So the thing is you need your two drives instead of one is because you want to write in two places. If one disk fails, the data is on the second one. All right. Regardless of the cost, you are paying twice the cost, but you are getting some peace of mind. All right. So that is what it is. And it provides availability, performance, and capacity. So the RAID levels, RAID 0 simply means striping. Now, this is what you have to know, striping. Striping means that you write the first block here, the second block there, the third block here, the fourth block there, the fifth block here, the sixth block there, seventh block here, eighth block there. Why is it good? Because when you want to read, 
you can read the first block from here and at the same time read the second block from there. So your read speed goes up by a factor of 2. All right. In fact, your write speed also goes up by a factor of 2. In your writing, you write first block here and second block there in parallel. Right. So now you are using two, two disks, but your performance has gone up by a factor of two. Yeah. So this is this is yeah. Okay. So the good point. The point is read zero. The word redundant is kind of you know you know not correct. There is no redundancy here. Right. But let's see. You combine with some other things later on. Read one is mirroring. Want to know what mirroring is? Mirroring means that you keep copy. So you mirror so everything that you write on this one. You also write on this two. <laughs> I like to write block one here, block one here, block two here, block two here, block. So now you have advantage of the performance. Obviously, I mean performance. You write performance doesn't go up, but the read performance does, does go up. Right? You can read in parallel. But you have now one more thing, which is the reliability, fault tolerance. If one disk fails you have a copy. So that is the red one. Red one is mirroring. Now I said the word without parity. So I didn't explain what parity is. But you get a higher read perform. Now let me explain parity. Rate two is bit level striping with dedicated Hamming code parity. So first of all, parity bit you should all know is you know if you have when you write 8 bits to memory, the me in the memory 9 bits are written because there is a parity bit. Right? Event parity or the odd parity. Right? Everybody knows event parity and odd parity. And so that helps figure out if there is any, any error in the bits. Right? Also, if there is no error, if one bit is lost, you can figure out what that bit is because you have 8 out of 9. Right? So here that is what we are using is that if we have, if we put 9 disks instead of 8, then if one disk goes away, we can figure out what that disk had because everything should, bigger, should add up to even number of ones or even number of zeros. Or odd number, so sorry, even number of ones or even odd number of ones, whatever parity you are using. But then there is a stronger parity called Hamming parity. Hamming code is basically a stronger code than just counting the number of bits. Hamming code is used for, you know, for error correction and error detection and other things. So that can be put on the disk as well. So you have, you could have one bit, two bit, three bit code. And so basically you, you add that many more blocks. So you get a, instead of five blocks, you write eight blocks because three blocks are parity. Right? So here, I haven't shown the picture here, but you will write A1, A2, and then A3 would be parity. And actually, I wouldn't call it A, A3, but I would call it AP, which is A1P, which is parity, something like that. Anyway, so you have parity. So the thing is, if one disk fails, then that happens, right? RAID 3 is byte level striping. This is bit level striping. So bit level striping means you do one bit here, one bit here, one bit here, and the parity bit there. Byte level is you write one byte, one byte, and parity byte there. Not commonly used. This one is not commonly used. This is not used. So zero and one are used. One used. Four. Four is block level striping. So you write a one, a two, a three, and then you write a parity. You write b one, b two, b three, and you write a parity. Actually, the parity, as you can see, is being doesn't have to be written with one disk. It could be. It could be distributed. So this is shown as RAID five. In RAID four. It will be here, but rate 5, it is basically distributed. So the parities are, can be anywhere. So the good thing about distributed parity, if, if, um, if suppose this disk went away, uh, let's say this disk went away, then at least some data you can read. You can read A2, A3, B3, B2, and you know, so on and so forth. Only some parities, one fourth of the parities will have to be reconstructed. If you have everything on the parity here and this went away, then everything has to be reconstructed. It's just reconstruction time is lower with distributed parity. No, no, there's no mirroring here. So it's only parity. There's no mirroring in this picture. Actually, parity is better than replication. Parity is better than mirroring. Mirroring is 50%. Parity could be 20%, 13%, 1 10%, as much you know, lower overhead you want. The thing is, if you just take 10 disks and put one bit of parity, you get 11. 
right? As opposed to mirroring, you need five and five. So, I mean, I, I, simplest example would be just to carry even and odd parity. You know how even parity works? In the even parity, you count the number of ones, they have to be even number, five ones. If something goes away and you don't know whether it was zero or one, and, and then you just count it. So one bit will actually, one bit parity will not let you construct that bit, but what you do is you keep it so that you get two bits and that, that will indicate you which, bit, what was the bit that you lost. Maybe you can take a two bit example. Let's take any, um, let's see. So let's say you want to write three bits and you instead of three, you write five. So you have eight combinations and then you have two bits you have added. So the total 32 combinations. So 32 out of eight are valid. Sorry, eight out of 32 are valid. Right? So when you get any four of those five bits, you can figure out which one is the valid combination next to it. Any bit can go wrong. Doesn't matter. As long as you have, see, out of 32 combinations, which includes the parity, you have only eight valid combinations. And then you, and when you find yourself in any place in this 32 point space, you find out what is the closest, what is the closest valid point, and that is the point. Basically, I mean, you have to write down 32 combinations. I can do that, but basically, you write down 32 combinations, and then whenever something goes wrong, you find out which is the closest one. You know, generally one bit away from you, valid one, and that is what because the two valid ones will be two bit away from each other at least. Red six actually has double distributed parity and allows for two failed drives and um, better for large drives. Nowadays, the drives are very large, terabytes and petabytes and so on and so forth. They are good, looks good, but when they go bad, you really lose a lot of information and it takes a long time to fix all those problems. So you might as well get one more. So RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, right? RAID 0, 1 and 5 are most common. And then you can combine them. RAID of RAID. RAID of RAID is you could take RAID, RAID 0 and take two of them and make RAID 1 out of them. So this will be called RAID 0, 1. You make RAID 0, RAID 0, and then you make RAID 1. So RAID 0 means you strike. RAID 1 means you replicate. Mirror. So you make two disks and then make two copy and a copy of the both the disks. RAID 1, 0 is the opposite of that. RAID 1, 0, you mirror first, RAID 1 first, a1, A2, A3, copy, and then you strike. Similarly, rate 53 would be 5 and 3. So look up what is 5, what is 3, and you will find what it is. All right, but the only thing you have to remember is that you do the first digit first and the second digit later. All right, and there are other combinations, and I have given you a homework. Draw rate 50. Dedicated parity. The keyword is dedicated versus distributed. So there is one disk which is with parity. All right, I think that is probably now in the history. Rate five is equally good, same number of disks, everything is same, distributed is better. So that's why rate four is not used. Similarly, we said rate three is not used. Only thing which is used is zero, one, five, okay?